<laughs> Hello. This is Sandra from Talent Monkey, and today I'm here with Andres. He's located in Malaga, and we met each other some weeks before on a meetup for developers. Nice to meet you, Andres. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, nice to meet you too. You are a computer vision developer. And maybe this is one of the first questions I have to ask you. What exactly is your background and how did you come to this uh, state of being a computer vision developer? So uh, my story is a bit long story, but short said, uh, I studied the optics here in Spain mm -hmm. and then I moved my professional path to, towards uh, computer science. And then I moved to Malaga uh, here I'm, I'm working, I'm studying also for the Malaga University. So I was really inspired by how the, how the brains, how our brains work. And uh, so it, it made me ask how our vision works. So I resolved that question on, with the computer science. So I mixed my, my background uh, on, on optics with the computer science. So I'm here now. Wow, okay. So what is optics <laughs> exactly about? <laughs> yeah, so here in Spain, yeah, here in Spain is like, a, it's a degree, it's four years degree, with, mm -hmm. where we mix like a, a medicine with physics, mm -hmm. and it's wow. everything related with the, with the, uh, the eye and, uh, and physics. So it's, it's, uh, it has both worlds. So I think it's really interesting extremely interesting yes. and it can have a huge impact can't it yeah actually um actually you can see that computer vision is everything around us now so yes, i i why. just got excited with this field now wow it, it really excites me as well because uh, thank you. i think it can have such a big impact into our world so what yeah, it are does projects you are already thinking about or maybe you are already working with? Um, we are actually working with uh, at security level with uh, citizens. We are, uh, I'm, I'm working with the university. We're trying to develop a intelligent system using uh, neural networks. So kind of artificial intelligence stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we're trying to track people around uh, the streets so we're trying to predict uh, an accident could happen, you know, like uh, if a car is coming and uh, someone's crossing that cr uh, crosswalk, we can predict if it, we have, if there is any chance of having any kind of accident. So then we wow. alert with lights and stuff. It's, it's related with the smart cities project. So it's really interesting. Yeah, it's more related with security, uh, the field we're working now. Wow. Hmm. So the Smart City Project, uh, tell me more about this, please. So, yeah, so um, Malaga University is working in a few projects trying to develop like smart cities where mm -hmm. we try to wow. bring artificial intelligence into normal life, you know? Mm -hmm. So we have, we have some security cams installed in, the, yeah, in, the, in our campus. So we, tr we, we took that data, like everything is private, so uh, we took that data from the cameras and we just processed the image. So what we have is kind of information like already processed, like uh, so many people cross here, so many cars came here, and so many, uh, uh, so many of them had to stop while the car was coming. And we have some statistics that can help us improve wow. them. And then we have like some um, uh, security systems built in on crosswalks. So uh, by now it's just lights, you know, mm -hmm. like some kind yeah, of, any so. kind of lights that, that is uh, pointing to, towards the, the pedestrian. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we try to say to the cars coming like, hey, take care because students are crossing here. You know, mm -hmm. okay. it's kind of that. Yeah. So it's, it's a project on, on research. It's been yeah. one year now, so, wow. so it will keep developing. Now it's like we have a small prototype and we were supposed to have it now for this month, but we have to wait due to yeah. COVID. Yeah. So, yes. 
By the way, how's the situation going? We are sitting here in Mena Jarafe, mm. so we are still in Spain, quite close. So mm. what about your daily life in Malaga at the moment? Maybe you can well, share this shortly with the audience. Yeah, now it's simple. We stay at home 24-7. We just go out to buy some food and that's all. We don't do anything else. For, for us, our work is simple because we can work remotely. So we are happy with it, you know, yeah. like, and not so many things change it. Was the university ready to this, working together remotely? Uh, actually, uh, in my project, yes, we were, uh, because we actually developed this kind of uh, remote work mind from the very beginning. So amazing. So for us, yes, for us, it was not that bad. It was not that bad, let's say. Mm -hmm. What are the typical tools you are working together in this uh, team? Yes, uh, we use, of course, uh, the email, uh, basic. We use Slack and, and Trello. Mm, great. great. So, so you as a university working with Slack, I think not every university is doing that in no, the world. No, but, but it's, yeah, I know, but it's just, uh, I mean, every, every, every uh, department Every mm -hmm. research group has its own tools. What is the average age of your team? That would be very interesting for me. Uh, in uh, this it's, no, it's really young. I say, uh, well, uh, it's uh, it was around uh, 22 years. I, um, I think I'm one of the oldest ones with oh, uh, 26. Really? Yeah, <laughs> I am. So, so yeah, we are a young team, but it's related with the university, so it's normal. Maybe you can come a little bit more into the tech deep, because yes. I would really like to know a little bit more in depth about the prediction part and how you set the, those things up. So okay. you, start, you said you started one year ago. Mm -hmm. um, so how to start such a project? What was well, the first, what have been the first steps in the planning? Well, it was really, really hard at the very beginning because we had to, we had to sat, sit down and tell uh, what we wanted to do. So, so we knew the ideas where we wanted to go, but we didn't knew the path. So at the very beginning, we were really, um, we didn't have the right focus because we were trying so many ideas differently till we find someone to go through. <laughs> yeah. So at the very beginning, it was really a lot of calls, a lot of meetings, a lot of uh, quick ideas, prototypes. And it took us a few months, a few months to set down, to, to have everything clear, mm -hmm. just to go through and start working, uh, prototyping and doing things. So, um, yeah, the very beginning it was just uh, uh, sketching ideas, looking for uh, already done codes, how other developers do, did the same or something uh, similar, mm -hmm. and then we started with the with the with the technical part, which is a, I don't know well the the background of the people hearing us now, but I'm gonna be more technical. Yeah. So please. we had to <laughs> yes yes. So we had to choose the the architecture of our of our neural network. Because what we do is uh, is uh, object detection and mm -hmm. object tracking, which is uh, basic on uh, computer vision science. And uh, what we do is we train a neural network, an artificial neural network called convolutional one, mm -hmm. and we train it so it can recognize whether people and cars are coming or going. And if uh, so, if basically if we have any pedestrian or car on our visual field, and whether they are going, so we also track mm -hmm. them. You know, it's not it's so a simple part of the work is okay. We have a car and we have a pedestrian, but on the next frame, uh, we will have another car and another pedestrian that can be the same or not. So we need to we we developed like a tracking system. Mm -hmm. that uh, focus on the, so it says in this frame, this is the pedestrian, this is the car, and they move here and here. So yes. now, now they are closer. So we, we front a lot of troubles then at the medium term. So it was like uh, month number six or seven that, for example, so on, on our computers, it worked very well. But then we have to tune everything perfectly so it fits on... Yeah on these simple devices we have here. 
Yeah. That's what we're working with. It's kind of a small superpower computer. It's called a yeah. Jetson Nano. It's an embedded system, so we had to put all our uh, software. How, how is it called? Yeah. Jetson Nano. It was mm -hmm. yeah. It was it is uh, like a small computer developed by Nvidia. Yeah. And, and yeah, we just had to build our models simple enough to fit in here to have real time. You mm -hmm. know, because normally we use our big computers and they it runs like perfectly on real time. I understand. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah, a so, mini computer, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah. So we have to also then we have to move towards the part where we make it uh, uh, fluent. You know, mm -hmm. because it must be real time. Mm -hmm. We we cannot delay sure. the the processing one second because we can have a, an accident. Go so ahead. that was really really hard. Because we had to go down the code and and fix how and figure out how everything works, mm. and yeah, now we we finished that part and now we're the part with the implementation. So we're now now build, putting all the parts together, Amazing. and we are yes, and we are uh, we want to. So we were supposed to finish already, but yes, we we will do it when everything wow. finished and we have uh, freedom again. So it's even possible for you guys right now to make already predictions. What will happen next and uh, what is the typical uh, way how this pedestrian is now walking by? No, when we say predictions, it's kind of, what we have this, this car, it's like we, we have this car moving this direction yeah. and the pedestrian is about to close, to, mm -hmm. to cross, sorry. So uh, we know that uh, at some point, the car will have to stop, so oh. we just turn the lights on. You know, we just uh, we we just warn the 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 driver that uh, mm -hmm. someone's crossing. You know, there's difference mm -hmm. between your solution and the traffic lights. Yeah, the point is that this security system was supposed uh, to the points where there are no traffic light traffic yeah. lights. Go so on. the point is that here in Spain, most of the deaths produced by accidents. Are happen in the places where no traffic lights are. Yeah. So we try to improve something simpler. So the Amazing. next point will be to make it even cheaper, cheaper, and to build everything inside the normal uh, sign. You know, uh, like a warning sign. Here in Spain, it's like a triangle. Yes. So we with a small camera tracking everything Amazing. from from mm -hmm. above. Got it. And and doing all the work from the inside. Amazing. So you are planning to have the light in the end also inside the um, yeah inside the sign itself. Yes. Yeah, that's the point. What do you think? Uh, did you already do some tests? Uh, are car drivers reacting to those lights? No, we couldn't do that tests because, as I said, we were supposed to make it now. Mm -hmm. So so Got no it. no test no test uh, at the moment we okay. had no test. But okay. it's, it is true that we just, when we were taking the data from the, so we installed our camera and so in uh, above the signals and so, uh, we just, the driver seeing the camera, they, they slowed down, but it has nothing to do with uh, <laughs> artificial intelligence. So yeah, they, they, no, no, we had, we did notice. Till now. That's a pity to hear. So in the end, we just need some, <laughs> yeah, some fake camera, fake cams, plastic cams <laughs> to implement. And that's all. And that's all. <laughs> then slow down a but lot. It's also okay when we at the end uh, solve a problem. It's okay. <laughs> so simple. Plastic camera, fake camera. Here in Malaga, there's also a B2X. Uh, there's like um a big uh, place where people can actually try 5G. And, oh, okay. and and autonomous cars. Mm -hmm. Where is this place? Uh, I think is I don't know exactly what it is. We've never been there, mm -hmm. but uh, it's uh, actually really 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 new. It was uh, open like uh, two or three months ago. Oh, what a pity! Now they can't yeah, yeah. try out things. No, nothing at all. So we the next stage is supposed to have uh, wireless communication with mm -hmm. uh, IOTs. Mm -hmm. And be, among all the dis, uh, among all the um, all the computers we have, you know. So, yes. uh, for example, if someone's crossing, mm -hmm. uh, we can uh, advise the car coming. And if it's an autonomous car, there won't be any trouble. So the car will 
have an alert like, hey, the, another pedestrian's coming. So Amazing. slow down. So it's slow, yeah, that those are those are automatically. Yes. Right? So that, those are the ideas over the table. But yeah. as I said, it's uh, a lot of a lot of research. Um, what could be other um, use cases for you in the future when, whenever this project is done? Maybe you have a hard topic or a hard project for the moment in your mind <laughs> and you want to share it with us. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, it's really interesting. Uh, yes, it's related with computer vision. And it's another, uh, so um, it's another project we, um, I'm working on and it's related with my studies. Because as I said, I'm studying on university. We're Sorry. using computer. So we were using computer vision uh, to improve uh, quality, image quality. So mm -hmm. uh, our research group is focused on medicine. Mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with the cars and so on. The research group is focused on medicine and images, uh, me uh, medical images. So mm -hmm. uh, we are really focused. We work with the hospital a lot. So I'm now uh, I'm now working on a kind of uh, algorithm or a new architecture, generative adversarial networks, for those who understand about it, and we're trying to to develop a, a GAN, a neural network that improves uh, medical images quality, mm -hmm. so we can uh, have a better diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And we also wow. can uh, have better scannings while we treat patients. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're working on that, and it's uh, at the very, very beginning. But uh, we, I, we hope that we have some interesting in wow. the next months. So this is going to be the next big project, isn't it? Yeah, but that's my that's the project of my master. So as uh, I mean, I'm really interested, and also the research group is working on something similar. Yes, so, yes, that's the next work. <laughs> sound, sounds amazing because again, a very big impact. Um, before it was all about security, security in uh, the traffic, and now we're talking about the medicine world. Exciting, mm -hmm. really, yeah, really. it is. In which light of in of which. Uh, like illness, could this be a very good um, yeah, use case? What can uh, you imagine? We're working with something called MRA, MRI, yes. sorry. So um, magnetic resonance images, mm -hmm. which are used on the brain. Mm -hmm. So when, if, uh, when you see an image of, we, we, what we do is we take a lot of images, like mm -hmm. uh, we cut the head like this on images, and then mm -hmm. we have like a 3D, perspective on what's going on inside the brain you know wow. so the the point is that we need a lot it takes uh, it takes uh, a lot of a lot of time to do that screening sure. so our the point is okay let's do a uh, worse quality images and then improve them afterwards with artificial intelligence what can you find out so for example when there's a change in the brain like uh, mm -hmm. cancer or something mm -hmm. you could find it out by this via these pictures? Uh, yes, so as I, more or less. So as, mm -hmm. as I said, we use a special uh, neural network before. So when in computer vision, the, the most common neural network is called convolutional neural networks, you know? So you need, the point of those neural networks is you need a lot of data, mm -hmm. you know, to train on. So you need, I don't know, a lot of data to train on uh, magnetic resonance images or, for example, COVID images to recognize that uh, something's wrong, you know, right. and we have this data to be labeled. labeled. So you, we, we have to tell the neural network, hey, this is COVID, for example, mm -hmm. or this is wrong, and, mm -hmm. and, and we have, and we have to, to tell, recognize this is wrong. And, for example, another picture, this is right. So this lab yeah. level recognize this kind of feature images as, as right. So a problem is that uh, it's really hard to find uh, uh, data sets on medicine. Yeah, it's really hard because I don't, we work with, I don't know, thousands of images and for having good, really good quality, you need it as much as possible, you know? So we already have algorithms called data augmentation where we try to, with the images we already have, we try to make even more. Wow. So then another kind of neural networks, the GANs, the GANs one we talked before, mm -hmm. we use them to make even more images. 
mm -hmm. those of those pictures. So we use those generated artificial generated images to train our convolutional neural network. So we use one neural network to train another one. So it looks like it works very well. And uh, so that's a, one point. And the other point is uh, having a small images, res small uh, resolution images and generate good resolution images. So, mm -hmm. so that's, uh, that's a little bit how this research could help. We will see, we will see. Uh, there's a, I think there's a trade now between uh, security yes. and privacy. It's always this, uh, this uh, fight and we have to, actually we have to choose because we don't really choose. Uh, we have to choose whether to have more security or more privacy. Mm -hmm. So we have to keep this in mind while developing the prototype I told about at the very beginning, mm -hmm. because we are not allowed to record people on the streets and keep yes. those, those images. So we, the point is, was to process the information at the, at the, on, on real time at the, at the, uh, at the edge. Mm -hmm. So that what, what is happening and then process that information and send anonymous, anonymous data. So, so here in Europe and uh, the next years, I think we will see how laws change to fit how we develop artificial intelligence. Mm. So we will see, I, I mean, uh, I think it won't be as simple as taking a picture of someone and get this, its information, at least the private information. Because we can see how Ch China managed this, uh, this uh, COVID situation, and they could knew just uh, really quick who, who was in, that, in which place. And yeah. they could really connect people together and tra trace the uh, COVID really fast. And You're here right. in... I, here in Europe, it's more like uh, I'm not really, I don't really want to give my information about uh, where I was, even if it helps to stop a uh, pandemic. Mm. So we have to find the trade between uh, yeah, privacy and security. It's important to remind that we, we, we train these uh, algorithms to make decisions. Mm -hmm. So it's really important also to check out which data is being used. So I think we have to focus on, on that because in the, in the close future, I think artificial intelligence will take decisions of a lot of things. Oh, yes. And actually, they already do it, uh, but we don't know why. Or we actually, it's really hard for us to, to know why. So I think explainability is now more important with uh, artificial intelligence. And also with, the, as I said before, I think a huge problem now is the quality of the information. Mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to figure out which information is real, mm -hmm. which one is not. Um, Correct, maybe as well. Mm -hmm. And it will be hard for us to distinguish uh, which mm -hmm. videos are real and which mm -hmm. ones are not, for example. Deep fakes are videos, basically, yes. that are fake. You know, but but they, they look like them. real. They okay. look like real, and they they feel like real. Like, and we, we you can see a lot of videos about it, about this, like Barack Obama talking, and yes. saying whatever whatever you want. Okay, it's and called deep fake. Deep fake, yes. Okay, cool. And and it's really hard for us uh, to distinguish whether a video was real or fake. Yes. And if anyone hearing us knows Kaggle competitions is uh, like develop software competitions that if you win that competition, you, you win some money and some recognition. So, so they offered $1 million to the best algorithm that, try, that uh, could distinguish between, between real uh, videos and fake videos. Wow. So uh, <laughs> yeah. a lot of companies are uh, putting a lot of efforts here. Yes. So yes, like explainability, uh, fakes uh, are really hot topics now. Make, makes sense, yeah, because we have mm -hmm. too much information and you told some minutes mm -hmm. before that, uh, yeah, we have an information overload and we have to find mm -hmm. out which information is the right one for us. So especially when we are talking about fake news or fake, in this mm -hmm. relation, fake videos, 
it uh, totally makes sense uh, that people can see it directly. I think it's also time right now. Uh, I I really love the outcome of these talks. I didn't oh, expect you. it before, to be honest, for, for all of you who are listening here. Um, I was not in depth prepared uh, what Andres is doing uh, in his project and I'm extremely excited right now to found find out and i hope you enjoyed your time as well and it was yes i did thank you for your time and uh, thank and you too i wish you a great day bye. <laughs> it will be <laughs> bye bye